Now move on to the z-axis block. I bought here a set of uh, like linear rail uh, lead screw with the uh, like anti backlash uh, nuts here. So it doesn't move when I push this way, and it only move when I turn this. So this z-axis is uh, 250 millimeter. The whole set here I bought for like 18 dollars from AliExpress, so it's very reasonable. Okay, so here for the gantry plate. Uh, I have two versions, one just doesn't have the pocket here. The reason is just uh, I only found the 20mm M4 bolt at the store that I went to. So this uh, without the pocket it doesn't fit uh, because uh, if I put on the spacer here and then I install the bearing here, uh, yeah, it doesn't fit, it's not long enough. So I have to make another one another version with the pocket go down like five millimeters so I have just enough to like bolt in the bearing block so first of all what I'm going to do is just I'm going to just install the bearing block on this gantry plate Okay, so next step I just going to install the floating head setup. Okay, so now for the floating head setup, I have here 10 cm MGN15 uh, rail and the bearing block just come with it, but I'm not going to install it now. I just only install the rail first. So just uh, you will need about like three of the M3 uh, 25mm lamps and bolt so just slide through slide them through the hole here Okay, so now the rail is tightened on here. The next step is just to install the like, stopper for the Z-axis. So the bearing block doesn't slide like, all the way out here and fall off. So I just make this block here to stop it like this. So I just have to put some of the like, M6 bolt about 25 millimeter uh, through here. Okay guys, so now just I have the stopper, the rail installed on this plate. Next step, just I have to slide on this uh, bearing block on this. So just always remember to keep the plastic piece on when you are not having it on the rail. Because if you don't, all the balls here will run over the place and uh, it's really hard to put them back on. So always keep the plastic on. and. Uh, to put the bearing block on this rail, just line up the plastic piece uh, with the rail and push it in like this. So you're going to push the, the rail and push the plastic piece out by itself. Okay, so no problem. Okay, so now next step is just to install this uh, like nut housing block on this. Yeah, just be careful, don't tip the bearing block this way, it will kind of like slide out and uh, all the steel ball inside will run all over the place. Okay, so for these two bolts, I only use one washer to lock it down quickly, but here, for these two, they're really close to the rail. I need to put more washer so actually the bolt here would be high enough to stop the bearing from sliding out. Yeah, so the bolt here 
just stop the bearing right at the edge of the uh, rail so this would be just perfect so I got lucky here with the design okay so as you can see here I have the bearing will be blocked by this bolt so it's not going to slide out so the next step is just to install the limit switch here so when uh, the switch uh, kind of like close it will stop the Z axis from moving down so that's how the uh, floating head setup works okay so this is type of limit switch that I going to install on this I didn't make the hole for this because you might use different type of limit switch so this to mark the hole I just like kind of push the bearing block down here and line it up so it kind of like at the right place so when it move up it will push the limit switch so here what I will do just I use the one of the screwdriver tip I just go through the hole and push it down to make the mark so I can drill it through later okay so now I have the mark I just want to use the 2 millimeter drill bit and drill through okay so I just use two of the M2 20 millimeter lens here to slide through these holes uh, I got lucky it just long enough for the uh, thread to catch so yeah you can use the 20 mm lens uh, M2 bolt to fix it but if you have a longer one it should be safer so 20 mm or more okay so now as you can see I have really little space here uh, before the switch actually click so that's all you need for the floating head setup so next step I just want to install this on this uh, plate Okay, so now just I install everything on here, everything is tight and as you can see here, I can uh, turn this very easily, moving up and down, so no problem at all. Okay, so the next step, I just need to put together the stepper model mount for this Z axis. Uh, like, uh, I don't need really big model, I only use the NEMA 17 because this is really kind of small axis and uh, it doesn't have much weight on it so this probably will be enough so to do this I have these four pieces so first of all just I need to fix these pieces to this plate I'm just going to use two of the 45 millimeter M6 board now you don't need to be really tight for now just tighten it by, tighten it by hand next step just install this step model on this piece so before doing that just fix this uh, coupler on this okay so now we have the coupler on the step model just slide it in here and use some of the M3 25 millimeter length board to fix this down here okay so now supposedly if you just put this here it should just match perfectly with the Z axis so now you can see I am a bit short on this sharp so I have to move it up a little bit so I have to loosen this and readjust it Okay, so now just uh, I push this up uh, here and I can slide it in here 
So I can just uh, like, tighten it again. Okay, so the next step, I just want to leave this up here and pour a bit of the wood glue in the crack here. I don't need too much, just a little bit. Okay, after pouring some glue here, I just want to use this tip of the uh, like zip tie to spread it underneath. And now I can press the two pieces together. Okay, so next step, I just want to I glue the side plate. Okay, so now what you can do is just drill some small hole and put some screw here and from underneath up here so it will stay together like really sturdily. Okay, so now for the torch holder, I have this piece to be fixed on here, but I will do it later. First of all, I want to glue this piece two pieces to here and then this to here and this to this side so well I just use some wood glue here's the torch holder just glued together it's really sturdy so before I actually install this on this uh, bearing block I just want to take the chance to solder two wire to the pin of the limit switch since uh, I still have space here, once I install this on here, I have very limited space, so that's why I'm going to do this first. So I'm just going to solder it on the normally open pin, these two pins. This is the normally closed, so I'm not going to touch this, only these two. Okay, so now I have the wire soldered on here. I'm just going to install this uh, torch holder on this bearing block. So I'm just going to use some of the 25mm length M3 bolt. Okay, so now I have the Z axis block is ready to be installed on the machine. So let me just show you how it looks like on the machine. Okay, so now I have this Z-axis block installed on here and you can see that it can move around really smoothly so it functions really exactly as I designed it on the computer. Okay, so now the base of the frame is mostly done. Uh, I only need to glue a few pieces together to like, adjust the belt tension. So for this, I want to do it on the X-axis first. So here are the pieces that I need here. So, first of all, I'm just going to take these two pieces with the hole here. I'm just going to slide the bolt through the hole here on the uh, bracket of the X axis, like this. And I put these pieces on. This is just to make sure that they will fit like, after gluing, uh, like the hole will be lined up. Like this. And then, uh, well, I'm just going to have to glue these two pieces here. And then I uh, glue these pieces at the back. Well, I want these pieces to be straight, so I'm just going to take the ruler. I'm just going to clamp this down a little bit on this side. And uh, to keep it in place, I'm just going to use some uh, of the thermal glue. So while I'm waiting for the wood glue to cure, this will hold it up together. I just wait for the thermal glue to cool down and then I can release the clamp. Or I just can leave it here. But I probably will take it out to clean up the glue on the ruler. And uh, this piece, I just want to glue it here.
Okay, so now I just leave it here for now for wait for the wood glue to cure and that's it for this piece. Okay, so the next step is I need to glue together the slider to adjust the belt tension. Okay, for the belt, I just going to use the HTD 3M belt, so it's like a uh, three millimeter pitch. So I will need this type of uh, like idler just with this here. So it's 20 teeth on this one and the whole the bore here is 4 millimeter. So I just have to use some of the M4 bolt to slide through it. Something like kind of long like this. So what I need to do is just slide it through here. Slide through the belt. Slide through here. So it's kind of lined up. And then uh, I glue this through here. Just adjust, align the edge like this. So it would be like this to adjust. So it will be sliding like this to adjust the belt tension. But before glue it together, I probably should like slide this M6 bolt. Uh, the longer uh, the bolt, the more range you will have to adjust the tension. And uh, it should have like the kind of fully thread bolt. So it's just like slide it in here and uh, pound it into this slot. So I just press it in for now. Yeah, this one we just press it in, should be okay. And then I just want to use wood glue to glue this piece on top and uh, one another piece on the bottom. Okay, so now I just wait for the glue to cure. So this is it for the slider for the belt tension adjuster. I just only need to make three of them. Okay guys, so while waiting for the glue to dry on all the other pieces, I just going to take the time to install a few pieces just I need to install the belt later on. So first of all, here's the belt that I'm going to use. This is the ATD 3M belt. So it has three millimeter pitch. What I'm going to do is I'm going to cut a piece of this uh, and glue on the little kind of like square tube. Just have a kind of long slot here. So it can slide up and down. Just the reason just I'm going to use this to lock the belt later on. So let me just uh, cut this and use some super glue to glue them uh, on this. Okay, so now I have the pieces of belt, just the glue on these pieces. I'm just going to take out the bolt here and replace them with the longer one so I can fix this piece on them here. So now you can see how it look like on here uh, when these pieces are installed because of the slot is kind of long so you can, you can adjust the height on this like the distance between this and this so later on when I run the belt I'm going to go like this and uh, go slide in here like this and then I just cram this down and uh, tighten the bolt here so the belt will be locked in here Okay guys, so to install the idler here on this slider, I just going to use some of the M4 bolts go through here and uh, I have to keep some space between the idler and the wall of the adjuster slider here. So I just going to use some of the piece here that I cut from a tube, just have 4mm uh, inner diameter so it just go right in here. So that's how I'm going to do it. Okay, so now I have like the idler here, the spacer on two sides. I just got to jam lock this with two of the M4 nuts here. And uh, in the end I have the slider look like this. 
so it will be ready to install on the machine. For the X axis, I just have to uninstall this. Now later on, it might be a bit difficult to run the belt through for the X axis, but I think I can manage. Okay, so the next step is to install the motor bracket like this, and then the motor can be like this, or even this way, it should be fine. I should have enough space, but probably this way will be better on the x-axis. And that's about it for this. I just uh, lock it with the nut at the back here on this side, and that should be done. And then the motor can be installed like this. Okay, so to fix the end of the belt on this z-axis block, I have these two pieces. Just I need to kind of glue a piece of belt on this side, so to lock the belt on it. Okay, so now I have these two pieces ready. Let's try to run the belt. So first of all, I just want to try to slide those pieces at the back of the Z-axis. Okay, so, and I will need two pieces of uh, M5 between 35 or 40 millimeter length. So just slide at the back of the pieces here. The space at the back of the z-axis is very tight so you wouldn't have to take some time. This end of the belt slide just underneath the piece between the this plate and that the other piece so it's going to lock the gear to the piece of gear that I glue on the small pieces. Okay perfect. So now I can just uh, bolt it out use some uh, nuts on this side. Okay, so now this end of the belt is fixed. I just make sure that I have to have enough length to run through the other side, like the slider on the other side, and go back to fix on this side of the Z-axis block. Okay, I just trim the belt to the length that I need, and then just go through here. Wrap around the pulley here. Okay, after I push the belt, I go wrap around the idler on this side. I just go back here and uh, fix it on this. Okay, so now after a bit of struggle, I was able to install the belt on here. So now let me just try to adjust the tension on this side. Okay, to adjust the tension, I just only need to tighten this nut. Okay, it actually become quite tight quickly. So I have more than enough range here to adjust the belt tension. Okay, so now the belt is installed on the x-axis. The y-axis will be a lot easier. So let me just show you quickly. Okay, so now the belt is fixed on this piece. I just need to adjust the tension by turning this nut. And uh, I can do the same on the other side. So that's pretty easy for the Y axis. Okay guys, so the last step to finish this frame is to install the slats. And uh, to do that, I just have to install this two bar on here. And uh, I changed the design a little bit instead of install them here on the two holes that I already drilled here. I just want to make another four piece of this. It's the same one as the one here. So this way I can just move it like 
from side to side so I can adapt it to the length of the slash that I have. So let me just install this uh, on uh, very quickly. Okay, so now for the slats, uh, I have here 12 of the aluminum bar, which is 1 inch width. My plasma cutter only cut like probably 3 eighths of an inch, so this will be fine. So to install them on here, I just have some uh, bolt, just about 25 mm length. You can use something a bit less if you use like 1 inch width bar. So 25 or 20 probably good. So you just have uh, to roll one of the nuts in here and then one of the T drop in T nuts. So the space here you can just adjust to whatever you want. Like if you have more slats, you can put them closer together. If you have less, you can space them apart. And uh, if you, in some area you can just put them really close if you're going to cut some really like small parts. So let me just install quickly on all of this and uh, here on the side bar here I just put them like a bit like lower compared to this one so later on when I install it it's going to make kind of like a bow so it will kind of pressure it and it doesn't move. Okay, so now to install the slash here, I just put it here, bend it over here, and bend it here, push it all the way down, on both sides, like this, so it's just bold, and because of the pressure here, so it just stay in place, so really snugly, so I just want to install all the slash here. Okay, so now as you can see that I have all the slats installed here. It looks really like my design on the computer, so I'm pretty happy with this. In my next video, I will show you how I run the wire and set up the torch for this CNC. And hopefully I can show you one of the test cuts on this machine.